Hi everyone, it's Meher from Vancouver, BC, and welcome to my YouTube channel. The purpose of my videos is to introduce you to tips that will help you in your job search by interviewing experts in the field. By the end of each video, you will filled with knowledge that will help you elevate in your job search. And if you are a first time watcher, please subscribe to the channel so that you can get the notification every day I post the videos. So let's start with today's interview. Hi everyone, welcome back to another interview series. Today I have the privilege to interview Manu Verma. Hi Manu, how are you doing? I'm great, how are you today? I'm doing great, thank you for being here. So Manu has spent a long time in the HR world, so much so he hates using the term human resources. People are not resources, according to him, they are people. He spent time working in France, Hong Kong, India, and the US. Now he is focusing on building and serving as the subject matter expert, people and culture at the traction on demand community and leveraging cloud-based people solution developed internally and taking them externally to the HR world. So Manu, why do you hate human resources? I think just like I said, Mary, I just, uh, it, it just, it, it, nobody wants to be referred to as a resource, right? You know, it's just, we are humans at the end of the day, and I think that what, what sets us up, sets apart as organizations is how we treat those people. I think just the nomenclature alone, we yeah. just find it kind of offensive. Yeah, right? it can, yeah, it can be, but it's been all of, like you've been used all over the world. So I feel that that's also kind of lately there's been a lot of talk like people first, taking care of the people, internal people, and not just external people. I think there's a bit of a legacy uh, or a hangover, if you will, of that term HR, where you have this person that's sitting away in their corner office that doesn't understand the business and they're just truly be, be there to be the policy police. Yeah. So I want to get away from that concept of HR and try to take it more forward. And like you said, just really focus on, on people and culture. Yeah. And in that sense, we, we both live in Vancouver and we know that Vancouver is becoming kind of the tech sector north, but there's a lot of demands for, uh, technology people, but we are very short. So why do you think that Vancouver has become the tech hub and what are companies are doing to attract those talents to come to work here? Yeah, it's interesting. So I think um, there's obviously a big shortage of talent for a couple of reasons. First and foremost, yes, you say, are, are there, there's a lot of the larger companies that are coming in, uh, but the problem with these larger companies, and I'm not going to name them, but they're really displacing jobs, right? They're not creating any net new jobs. They're shutting down other sites across the world to come to Vancouver. So that's kind of problem one for me. Um, the other kind of interesting development is that every company is becoming a technology company, whether they like it or not, right? Starbucks, right? They have front-end and back-end developers and data developers. And so with this proliferation of everybody becoming a technology company, there's a strain on resourcing, there's that word resource, but there's a strain on people uh, that kind of have that technical background. Uh, so that's, and then what happens now, we, we find that people are, are poaching mm -hmm. talent from one another, yeah. which is also kind of feeding into this kind of uh, hamster wheel where we can't actually grow and develop our community because we're poaching from one another, which is driving um, scarcity, mm -hmm. which is also driving um, salaries up for people that are really quite junior that actually don't deserve those salaries. And it's creating a, a bit of an inflated bubble, which I lived through in the dot bomb era back when I lived in, in the Bay Area. And I'm really scared that it might happen again. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Everyone, like, you present a, a candidate job offer, like within maybe 24 hours, or maybe next day, he said, I got the counter offer better. Can you yeah. beat them or I'm going away? Yeah. yeah. Again, yeah. Uh, again, thank you for... So in the second part of your question, what are companies doing to, to bring more talent in, right? Yeah. And it's, it's also an interesting one. I think obviously giving people that flexibility and looking for and getting away from this whole concept of having ping pong tables and games at work. And I think a lot of those once these benefits were really designed, I think the the intent behind those things was, I think, a little bit sinister in that they're trying to keep people at work longer as opposed to kind of have that flexibility. We want you to stay at work, whether we're giving you a concierge to pick up your dry cleaning and get your haircut at work. Ultimately, they just want you to stay to work at longer. 
I think it's more incumbent among companies now is like, hey, come work how you can, when you can, just be really kind of goal driven. I think that's big. And just really uh, have that kind of work life, not balance, because mm -hmm. that's too binary for me, but more about work life integration. Because yeah. we know that there's different points in our calendar week, different points in the calendar year, different points in our life cycle. We've got different uh, pushes and pulls on our uh, discretionary time. And so having to a career that can go through those ebbs and flows, uh, I think that's what's really important. That's what companies continue to do. Yeah, and I feel that lately a lot of companies are talking about empathy, bringing your whole safe to the workplace because you cannot cut yourself once you enter to the work, bringing the home related or personal stuff and be very productive. Because as you mentioned, we have to be integrating those both two together at the workplace. Well, isn't that where innovation comes from? If I have to stop my personal self, keep my personal work at home, and more, like where does innovation and where does that creativity come from? Yeah. I totally agree. And thank you for those tips, Manu. Uh, for the audience listening, if you have any other tips in terms of how we can bring more talent in Vancouver, please leave it in the comment section. Like and share the video, subscribe to the channel, and tune in tomorrow for another question with Manu.